so much for being here for our webinar today with Catalyst Pharmaceuticals on, I'm going to say it right, a Gamry. You got it. Um, so we'll be talking about FDA approved Gamry today, as well as Catalyst Pathways. Um, I would like to introduce you to our three lovely ladies today. We have Carrie Estrella, Maria, oh my God, I even asked her name. <laughs> Pandolfo, and then Allison Anderson. So we thank you so much for being here today. Um, before we get started, I am going to just mention a few things. This webinar is being recorded. Um, so if for any reason you have to leave, if you have someone you know that wanted to watch this but wasn't able to, please feel free. Um, we will be sending the recording to you later on. Please feel free to share it. There is also going to be Q&A at the end, um, but we will wait Till the end to do that, there is a Q&A box at the bottom. It, for me, it's on the bottom right-hand side of my screen. There's two little boxes. It says Q&A. We do try to primarily go through that um, for questions and answers. We do try to monitor the chat to capture questions that way as well. But if you could please primarily use that, that would be very helpful. And then um, other than that, I think that's all for me and I will hand it off to Carrie. Awesome. Thanks, Alexa. And thank you guys for having us on. You know, we really, really appreciate this. So I kind of want to start it off with the disclaimer. Um, you know, statements made within our presentation are for information purposes only and should not be considered advice or recommendations from Catalyst. Please also note that the information in today's presentation about a gamma only applies to patients in the U.S. As always, please consult with your physician team when making decisions around your medical needs. And we'll have a QR code later in this presentation so you can see the full prescribing information. So next slide, please. So I am Carrie Austria, Senior Manager of Patient Advocacy at Catalyst Pharmaceuticals. And we are really excited to be able to meet with you and to discuss the launch of a Gamry with all of you. And we really wanna thank the individuals, the parents, the family members, advocates, and the patient group, including Jet, you know, that have contributed to the development of this product. You know, without your work, we would not have been able to bring a Gamry to the Duchenne community. Next slide, please. So I just wanna talk a little bit about our roadmap for today. I'm gonna to introduce you to Catalyst and our patient advocacy team. Uh, we'll talk about an overview of a Gamry. Maria will come on and discuss our path, Catalyst Pathways program and how to access a Gamry. And then, as Alexa said, we, we will open it up to a Q&A session. Next slide, please. So Catalyst is committed to developing innovative first-in-class medicines that address rare neurologic and epileptic diseases. Specifically, we serve communities in the Lambert Eaton Myasthenic Syndrome community, small cell lung cancer, Duchenne muscular dystrophy and epilepsy. And that really our priority is empowering patients and that's what really drives our decisions and processes. And we are committed to helping community, helping to communicate our patients' point of views by providing the tools, resources, and knowledge that they and their caregivers need to make these informed decisions about their health. Next slide, please. And this is a little bit about Catalyst, our overview and our values. You know. The patient community, the Duchenne community, really is at the heart of our mission. You know, we strive to put your needs first by actively listening to your community, partnering with the patient groups like JET, and collaborating to make sure the tools and we resources we do create are relevant and useful. Next slide, please. And our mission for our patient advocacy team is really quite simple, to build and sustain trusting relationships with families and patient organizations to address rare disease issues and create opportunities to make a difference in patients' lives. And launching a GAMRI really is an exciting step towards achieving this mission. So next slide, please. So I wanted to kind of discuss a little bit about our four pillars of patient advocacy. And if you kind of look at it as um, the way we build all of our programmings, within the Catalyst patient advocacy team is based on these four pillars. Um, the first pillar actually is the support pillar. Um, we feel once a patient gets diagnosed or family or caregiver kind of falls into the diagnostic journey, you know, the first thing they need is support. Support from their healthcare team, team support from their community, support from their family. We feel once they're supported, they feel supported, then they're ready to be educated. So that is the next pillar of our patient advocacy. Um, you know, giving them the tools and resources they need to make these important decisions for themselves and their families. Once they feel supported and educated, 
then they're ready to move to what we call the engagement pillar. And that's where they start to share their stories to get a little bit more involved beyond just the healthcare needs of themselves and their family. And we feel once that they feel supported, feel educated and feel engaged that they're ready to be empowered. And this is where they take the next step to actively manage their conditions, become leaders in their community, become volunteers. And these are really everything we do within the patient advocacy team supports one of these four pillars. Next slide, please. And that's us. That is our small but mighty patient advocacy team. We are led by Amy Grover, our executive director of patient advocacy, who has led the patient advocacy team at Catalyst since 2018. And our team has been growing and it's really exciting to be able to provide more opportunities to work together to provide more resources for your community. Next slide, please. And again, as I said at the beginning of uh, the top of this program, we really want to thank all of you for putting so much effort into the development of a Gamry. Um, it, it truly has been a great partnership to see this product being put together and over the years and to be able to work with everybody to bring it to fruition has just really been an excitement for our team. Last, next slide, please. And we are here to educate you and support you. My team, you know, really wants to get involved and work really closely with you. We have a wonderful relationship with Alexa and Maura and Eric and your team. And if any of you want to learn more about our resources or get more involved, please just email us at advocacy at catalystpharma.com. Next slide, please. And I'm really excited to introduce my colleague, Allison Anderson, who's going to talk more about Agamry and the Duchenne community. Here you go, Allison. Thank you, Carrie, for that introduction. And thank you to Jet for allowing us to speak with everybody today. It really is an honor to be here. Uh, I wanted to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Allison Anderson. I am the Medical Affairs Director for the Neuromuscular Team at Catalyst Pharmaceuticals. I have a team of nine medical science liaisons that primarily go out and speak to healthcare providers about uh, the data and the science behind uh, the products that we have. So um, it's just very exciting to be able to speak with you all today because I don't often get to be in front of, of this community. Next slide, please. We are very excited to officially have launched uh, a Gamry and I'm going to be talking about uh, uh, the indication of a GAMRI and the dosing, as well as the clinical trial, trial data and the registry information with you. Next slide. So how does a GAMRI work? Uh, a GAMRI is a new and novel corticosteroid that was developed to provide the anti-inflammatory effects of traditional corticosteroids while lessening certain side effects that you see with traditional corticosteroids. And when you think about what's happening uh, in Duchenne, inflammation is one of the major factors that is causing muscle damage. That long-term damaging inflammation seen in Duchenne is caused by a protein called NF-kappa B. A GAMRI, like other corticosteroids, limits the activity of that inflammation causing protein. And that is what slows down the course of Duchenne. The interesting thing though, is that a GAMRI is designed differently than other corticosteroids. So it actually reduces the glucocorticoid response. And that's a process that causes unwanted side effects that you see with traditional corticosteroids. Next slide. A GAMRI is an orange flavored oral suspension taken one time in uh, a day, preferably with a meal. In our trial, uh, the, um, the kids that were on a GAMRI took it with a glass of milk, but a meal works too. And the dosage of a GAMRI is actually based on the weight of the patient. Specifically, the dosage is six milligrams per kilogram up to 300 milligrams for patients weighing over 50 kilograms. So once a day, you shake the medication very well, uh, you withdraw it into the syringe, you administer it, and then you stick it back upright in the refrigerator. Next slide. 
So um, now let's talk about the clinical trial of a Gamry in boys living with Duchenne. It was studied in a 24 week clinical trial that included 121 boys with Duchenne from ages four to less than seven years of age. The effects of a Gamry on muscle strength and function were evaluated compared to placebo or a sugar pill in patients taking um, a lower dose of two milligrams per kilogram per day, and also a higher dose of six milligrams per kilogram per day. Next, we're gonna to briefly touch on the three key uh, outcome measures for which a GAMRI showed clinically important changes compared to placebo. So next slide. So time to stand uh, is actually a measurement that uh, measures the time it takes from, for a patient to stand up from lying completely down on their back uh, to standing fully up, up straight up. Uh, for patients taking the higher dose of a Gamry during the trial, the time to stand for them was 0, 0.0 seconds faster uh, than those taking the lower dose, than, sorry, um, than placebo. And for those that were taking the lower dose, uh, their time to stand was 0 0.45 rises per second faster. For both of those doses, those changes actually predict a delay in loss of ambulation or loss of the ability to walk. Next slide. The next outcome measure that was looked at is the six minute walk test. And that actually measures the distance a patient can walk on a flat, hard surface for six minutes. So patients taking the higher dose of a Gamry walked 42 meters or 138 feet further than those taking placebo. And the patients on the lower dose of a Gamry uh, walked 40 meters or 131 feet further than the placebo group. Next slide. The last measure we're gonna talk about is the time that it takes for a patient to run or walk 10 meters or 33 feet. Uh, during the trial, patients taking the higher dose of a Gamry showed an increase in speed of 0 0.24 meters per second over placebo and 0 0.79 feet per second. Next slide. So here you can see a list of side effects that occurred in at least 5% of patients treated with a Gamry and more frequently than placebo. I'll give you a minute to look at that. Okay, next slide. A Gamry was also compared uh, on certain safety measures with the standard of care prednisone. So what we noticed was that after 24 weeks of treatment, patients that were taking a Gamry had an increase in height percentile compared with a decrease in patients treated with prednisone. Also, a Gamry was not associated with a mean reduction in biomarkers of bone health. Lastly, a Gamry was associated with less behavioral problems compared with prednisone over the 24 week study. Next slide. Ah, so now I have to go read through the important safety information that you need to know about a Gamry. So I'll uh, quickly read through this. There is an increased risk of infection when taking corticosteroids like a Gamry. So you should tell your healthcare provider if the patient has had a recent or ongoing infection or has recently received a vaccine. Seek immediate medical advice in the case of a fever or signs of infection. Some infections uh, can be severe and sometimes even fatal. So patients should avoid exposure to chicken pox or measles, uh, but alert your healthcare provider immediately if exposures occur. Corticosteroids, including a Gamry, can cause an increase in blood pressure and water retention. Your healthcare provider, though, may monitor for those increases during treatment. There is also an increased risk of developing a hole in the stomach or intestines in patients with certain gastrointestinal disorders when taking corticosteroids like a Gamry. 
Corticosteroids, including a GAMRI, can it cause severe behavioral and mood changes. So please seek medical attention if behavior or mood changes develop. There is a risk of osteoporosis with prolonged use of corticosteroids like a GAMRI, which can lead to vertebral and long bone fractures. Corticosteroids like a GAMRI may, may cause cataracts or glaucoma. Your healthcare provider should monitor for, for these conditions if a GAMRI treatment continues for more than six weeks. And then there have also been rare instances of severe allergic reactions that have occurred in patients receiving corticosteroid therapy. Next slide. Before starting a GAMRI, please tell your healthcare provider about all medical conditions and any medications that are being taken by the patient. Next slide. So what else should you know about a GAMRI? Well, immunization should be up to date according to immunization guidelines prior to starting therapy with a GAMRI. Uh, this is really important. Do not stop a GAMRI or change the amount taken without first checking with your healthcare provider. And then lastly, I have an update. Catalyst has established a registry. It's called the Summit Study. And it's a, a registry to better document the long-term effects of a GAMRI. There are actually going to be 25 sites around the United States that are going to be offering uh, various assessments that go way above and beyond the standard of care. So this is no ordinary registry and it's really going to be able to tailor care according or alert uh, the patient's healthcare provider of changes that could be taking place while on a GAMRI. So very important. Next slide. Please use the QR code on the screen to view the Agamri uh, prescribing information or visit the URL on the slide. And then also for more, oh, next slide. For more information about Agamri, please use the QR code on this screen or go to agamri.com. So next slide. Now I'd like to transition to a wonderful person who has built the patient services team at Catalyst from the ground up. She's an amazing woman and I'm happy to introduce you to Maria Pandolfo. Thank you, Allison. Hello everyone. And thank you for allowing us to share this opportunity to give you information about Catalyst Pathways with your community. My name is Maria Pandolfo. I'm the Senior Vice President of Patient Services, and I've built this patient support uh, services and program for many rare diseases in the past, and I'm really thrilled to be able to do the same for the DMD community. What we're gonna do today is to just explore some of the services and support that Catalyst Pathways offers. Next slide, please. So Catalyst Pathways is our free support program. It provides people living with rare disease, their caregivers and their families with one-on-one -on -one support throughout their treatment journey with a GAMRI. In addition, a dedicated team of specialists is available to help them manage their unique challenges, which can range from starting treatment, questions about taking their medication and managing insurance issues. We want you to know that you're not alone in your rare disease journey and we at Catalyst Pathways are here to support you through an active calendar of events, activities, and resources. Live and virtual educational programs, webinars, and other resources are being developed for the communities we serve. Examples of possible program topics may include managing activities of daily living with a rare disease, insurance and disability, working or attending school with a rare disease, and caregiver perspectives. Next slide, please. So Catalyst Pathways is staffed with a team of specialists who have extensive experience in healthcare and can provide detailed information about your medication and dosing, as well as other helpful tools for managing daily life. Your team helps you get involved in other Catalyst Pathways programs and connects you to community and advocacy resources. 
I want to introduce you to a few key roles that you may be familiar with if you are already um, enrolled with Catalyst Pathways. Our care coordinators are the first point of contact. They welcome new enrollees into, into the, the program. They explain insurance coverage and benefits and find more sources of financial assistance if needed. They will also coordinate the shipment of medicine through our specialty pharmacy. Our patient access liaisons or PALS are experts on a GAMRI and can share updates on the status of your insurance coverage. They will be your main champion by putting you in the driver's seat and fighting for your needs. Also, your dedicated PAL can provide in-person visits in the home or another local place or virtual visits. Lastly, our insurance navigators work directly with enrollees insurance companies to determine coverage and identify whether a prior authorization is needed. Next slide, please. So Catalyst Pathways provides helpful educational resources on a range of topics about your condition and treatment, including written material and expert-led webinars and other events. Additionally, Catalyst Pathways offers services designed to help gain and maintain access to treatment. Next slide, please. So our language link transition services ensures Catalyst Pathway services and materials are available for non-English speaking people and families by providing an interpreter to join calls with care coordinators to translate materials as needed. In addition, we have several team members who provide Spanish speaking support to our Hispanic communities. And it also um, all of our patient materials are available in Spanish. Next slide. So we understand that medicine can only help if you actually have access to it. Through our delivery assurance program, that access is secured. Program team members are constantly monitoring and anticipating potential obstacles to med med medicine delivery and formulating alternate plans to ensure that patients can always get their medicine. Whatever the threat, hurricane, tornado, earthquake, transit strike, or major sporting event, Catalyst is ready to deliver. Next slide, please. An exclusive benefit to, to being in the Catalyst Pathways program is the Bridge Program. Catalyst offers free medication in the event of delayed access for reasons like insurance roadblocks or authorization delays. What the free medicine does is help carry you over any gaps in your insurance coverage to reduce the potential for a lapse in therapy. Next slide. Catalyst Pathways also offers robust educational resources, including printed and digital materials about your condition and your treatment and educational programs led by experts. We want you to know, however, that topics for these programs are chosen with patients and family input to ensure that all content is relevant to the communities we serve. We also provide links to community organizations that can help you advocate, advocate for your needs. Next slide, please. So Catalyst Pathways helps, um, aims to help you keep treatment affordable. We have a robust copay assistance program for patients with commercial insurance. We also have safety net programs in place for patients without insurance. And we also can direct you to a number of resources that can help with your out-of-pocket costs to ensure you have access to medication. Your care coordinator, your patient access liaison, all of these folks will help you navigate those insurance issues and coverage issues and make sure that you potentially ultimately get access to the medication that your physician has prescribed for you. Next slide. So I'm gonna segue a little bit from the, the patient support program to how you access a GAMRI. So the path to accessing a GAMRI and, um, and Catalyst Pathways support starts with a completed enrollment form. We are currently and have been accepting enrollment forms for Catalyst Pathways, which are available at yourcatalystpathways.com. The best way to access a GAMRI is asking your physician to fill out the enrollment form and return it to Catalyst Pathways. 
Next slide. The Catalyst Pathways enrollment form will be filled out by you and your prescribing physician. Note that there are some sections that should only be filled out by your physician as indicated on the form. In addition, a language, a Spanish language version of the form is available. The caregiver or patient, if over 18, must sign and date the patient authorization, authorization section on the enrollment form to allow Catalyst to communicate with the patient's healthcare provider, insurance company, and financial assistance organizations as necessary. When completed, your physician will send the completed form to Catalyst Pathways using the instructions provided on the form. Next slide, please. After your enrollment form is sent, Catalyst Pathways Insurance Navigators will work directly with your insurance company to ensure the medication is covered. This includes de determining if a prior authorization is needed for coverage. Also, a care coordinator will reach out to welcome you to the Catalyst Pathways program, explain your insurance coverage and financial assistance options, and coordinate shipment of medicine through the specialty pharmacy. Lastly, patients enrolled in Catalyst Pathways will receive a welcome kit that includes resources to help you get better acquainted with the Catalyst Pathways program and with your patient access liaison. Next slide, please. So receiving your medication. Once your coverage is approved, your Agamric prescription will be sent directly to your door by a Novo RX, a rare disease experienced specialty pharmacy. You won't be able to gain access to a Gamry at your local retail pharmacy, but a Novo RX will deliver medicine as quickly as overnight to your home or another location you provide. Experienced pharmacists are available to answer questions around the clock by phone at 1-844-288-5007. Next slide, please. We'll do a question and answer session, which I, I know the folks at JET are monitoring. Um, so if you wanna start that and we can, um, we can try and answer some of your questions. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let me pull it up. Come over here. All right. First question. Um, my older son was on the Vimorland trial uh, and we were told he could be eligible to get a Gamry that way by accommodating him via the EAP program. Is that still applicable or do I have to go through the neurologist in the hospital now? <clears throat> So I'm not sure who should be answering that question. So, um, but I will say that a Gamry is commercially available now. So if the physician and the patient decide that a Gamry is, is the appropriate therapy, they can go ahead and fill out an enrollment form and send it in. They don't need to, you know, to go through another option to, to gaining access to a Gamry. Perfect. Allison, is yeah. that... I'll just add a little bit. Yeah, yes. In the United States, the EAP programs basically have come down, wound down to not having any more patients in them. So you're correct. You would go through your neurologist to uh, request a prescription. Awesome. Thank you. Um, I don't know if you can answer this question, but is a Gamry available uh, through Medicare at this time? We so what we will do is to run a claim for you know any patient that comes in, and if there is not coverage through a specific insurance company or avenue, um, as I said, we do have safety nets um, available so that if a patient needs the product, they will get on therapy. Perfect. Um. Is there a cost provided for a Gamry yet? Do we know that? Is that, or would that just be going through Catalyst Pathways to figure out what insurance covers and what would be out of pocket? You're absolutely correct. Um, for the most part, you know, with for commercial insurances, we have a robust copay program. And again, as I said, there are safety net programs for patients without insurance or who are underinsured because our goal, of course, is to make sure that no patient is left behind. And if a physician and patient believes that this is the correct therapy for them, we will do everything in our, our power to make sure they gain access to it. Perfect. 
Um, <clears throat> there are a few questions about side effects of a Gamry. Um, so the first one is, are there any observations for the cushionoid appearance of the face? And what was the difference between prednisone and deflazacort versus a Gamry? Okay, I can answer that one. So in the uh, 24, so the trial vision DMD that uh, basically got a Gamry approved, the first section of the trial was 24 weeks. And that is what the FDA made their decision to approve Gamry <laughs> on those data. However, the trial did continue out to 48 weeks. So what I can tell you is that there was a comparator arm in the trial of a Gamry uh, compared to prednisone. And with any corticosteroid, patients generally do experience weight gain uh, when they start taking the steroid um, and also can develop some Cushingoid, Cushingoid features as well. And that was observed for a Gamry during the trial. However, uh, it was observed um, as you continue out after six, uh, six months, that leveled off the weight gain and the Cushingoid features leveled off to where we barely had any reports in the second part of the trial. And at this time, we have no uh, direct comparative data between a Gamry and uh, Deflazacort. So I know that you also had mentioned that, of course, with any corticosteroid, there is the um, possibility of behavior and mood changes. Um, how did that compare to traditional steroids like prednisone for a Gamry? That's a great question. And that actually was looked at in the first part of the trial, the first 24 weeks, uh, with a questionnaire called the PARS-3. And what was observed is that there were uh, uh, reports of behavioral changes, such as, let me tell you exactly what they were. Um, our side effect table called it psychiatric disorders, but really that included irritability, mood swings, frequency of temper tantrums, aggressive behavior, and sleep disorders. The uh, Agamry six milligram per kilogram group had uh, more of a number of behavioral problems compared to placebo, but less than the prednisone group. And same with the Agamry two milligram uh, group, they actually had less behavioral problems reported via that PARS-3 analysis than placebo and also far less than prednisone. And I'll also mention that mm -hmm. any behavioral problems that were reported as a part of the trial uh, were resolved without treatment and no discontinuations occurred. Uh, compared to the prednisone group, which did require treatment in some instances, and we did have some discontinuations. Thank you for that. Um, <clears throat> I also know that we had talked about in another webinar that we had recently um, about adrenal insufficiency and adrenal crisis. So do you expect patients taking a Gamry to develop adrenal insufficiency and possibly creating a dependency on a Gamry? So what we know from the clinical trial is that vomorolone or a Gamry is, a, uh, is an adrenal suppressor. So for patients that are on a corticosteroid, like chronic corticosteroid uh, treatment uh, regime, uh, they generally will, if they're going to switch over to a Gamry, they switch over from whatever their dose was to a Gamry at six milligrams per kilogram. And then if they're healthcare provider wants to try titrate them down or lower the dose, they can do that very slowly because we do know that a Gamry is an adrenal suppressor. So the answer to that question is a yes. Thank you. I think that's something that, you know, at least from hearing from the community, um, something that there was some confusion about, you know, uh, it being a corticosteroid alternative versus corticosteroids. So thank you for answering those questions. Um, a Gamry is a corticosteroid. Yes. Um, is there any evidence of cardiac and pulmonary benefit that you know of? So that's a great question. And right now, the only data that is known about that is all in animal studies. We have no human data for a Gamry uh, as far as cardiac benefit or pulmonary benefit. 
Um, but one thing I want to say is that the, the clinical trial was only uh, 48 weeks long, so we didn't anticipate we would see anything there. And we also do know that Agamri is a mineral corticoid antagonist, which is something that's very similar to a pleuronone or a sp spironolactone, which is used to sometimes treat uh, cardiac is issues. But we have no data at this point for Agamri in humans looking at cardiac or pulmonary information. Thank you. And then last question, um, not sure you can answer this, but I think this would be dependent per person. Are there limits on copay support, Maria? So um, it's a very robust copay program. And I would say in our experience there, you know, I'm not sure what they're, they mean by limits, but we have never had a patient who has exhausted their copay card. Let's put it that way. I hope Thank that answers your question. I think it does. Thank you. Um, I said last question, but one more came in. Um, how does the Gamry compare with prednisone uh, for bone structure and calcium numbers? Oh, good question. So I don't have uh, at this, I don't have any calcium data available to me at this time, but um, there was there's no head to head looking at bone structure with a Gamry and a Flazacort. Um, but we did do a cross-study comparison looking at Agamry uh, versus Deflazacor and prednisone in regards to bone fractures, vertebral fractures, and the amount of bone fractures in the Agamry group was 50% less than the um, Implaza group and 30% less than the prednisone group. But again, that's a cross-study comparison. They tried to match the control groups as well as they could, but there are always issues with that. So it is not a direct comparison to either one of those medications. Awesome. Well, thank you. And I will go to your next slide just so everybody has this. Thank you all for being here. Um, please go ahead and write down these, the number, um, the website, but if you do have any other questions, um, please feel free to reach out to me, alexa at jetfoundation.org, and I will go ahead and make sure that the Catalyst team gets it, and we will try to get you an answer if we are able. Of course, there's always things that, you know, sometimes can't be answered at that time, but we will do our best. Um, we, again, thank you so much for being here, Carrie, Allison, Maria. Thank you, thank you, thank you um, so much for being here. Um, and all of our, all, everybody that's on today, we appreciate you and we hope to see you soon. Have a great one, everybody. Thank, Thank you so you. much. Thank you. Bye everybody. Bye everyone.